I am the devil, and I am here to do the devil's work. Trevor from the Black Dahlia Murder here. Oh uh, yeah, in, in retrospect, looking back at Everblack, I'm very happy with it still. You know, it's been doing very well for us. Uh, the fans seem to like it, which is the most important part, I think. And um, yeah, man, I just really like the material. I like the songs. Uh, when we play them live, I feel a level of satisfaction that I haven't felt, you know, with the others. It's like getting more and just getting better as we go, I think, you know, so. You know, I, you know Everblack is cool, and uh, now here we are kind of wrapping it up with Everblack. This is really the last tour on it in the States, and then, uh, yeah, starting to think about part seven, man, but uh, yeah, I'm still proud. We're, I'm still a proud father. Uh, yeah, I think that starting with Ritual, that we entered a more experimental era of the band, and I think part of it was the inclusion of other instruments and you know using samples in between the songs and stuff like that. We had never done anything like that, and uh, being able to recreate that live and figure out how to do that was a big step in the right direction. So, really, I think that the band has become more dynamic since since Ritual, and then uh, that's kind of like carried over to Everblack. So. Yeah, you know, I do feel excitement to see what's next with the guys, you know, and it seems like every two years when we come back to write, they surprise me and they excite me with what they do and, you know, just uh, so pretty soon, yeah, we're going to enter that creative mode and I look forward to it, definitely hearing some new stuff and, but I expect that it'll continue that path of um, trying to create more drama with the music, you know, something with more dynamics, more interesting, an album that makes you want to listen to it from beginning to end, you know, which is hard, which is, you know, a hard task to get someone to do, I think, but that's been the, the focus, you know. Um, now, I mean, we've been moving at this, this pace, this, you know, two-year pace for ever, it seems like, and it just, you know, was working really well, and uh, we haven't really ever hit a block that was like, you know, that was frightening to us in, in creative terms, you know, like that. We've just been lucky and I think that really just keeping the two separate you know touring we don't really write on tour you know just kind of come out play all the ever black stuff have fun with that and enjoy that and then I guess kind of pool the creative energies and stuff until it's time to you know disappear for a while behind the scenes and write stuff but um yeah you know I think that uh, it's been a good decision to keep stuff coming out so so often and stay on that schedule because I think kids' attention span is uh, getting less every year, you know, as time goes on. And I think that it's helped to stay, you know, in their mind, in the front of their mind. And, um, you know, just having fresh material for people to be excited about has been good. And I think it keeps us excited as well to have new stuff to play, you know. It, we just uh, are always growing as a band, I think. And, um, you know, each album we try to push ourselves a little further. You know, we try to write songs that would be recognizable as BDM, but also try new things rhythmically, try playing different styles, incorporating different styles, and making things more dynamic and interesting, you know, so. Oh, well, I mean, it definitely makes you feel older to realize that there are generations of younger bands, you know what I mean? And we are kind of being looked up to by some bands out there, and, you know, we've influenced some bands, and. That's cool, it's flattering, but it also makes you feel old. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's interesting. And Alter Beast, you know, is a, is a good example. Like, those guys are influenced by us. They look up to us a lot. They are always taking advice for, uh, from us and asking questions. And, you know, that's, that's cool. You know, I think those guys are a great band, and I hope they have a long life. And whatever they want to know, man, they can pick my brain. But, you know, uh, yeah, you know, it's cool. It, it's, it's, it's definitely strange to be the oldest guy at the show, though. 
you know, we're getting there. We're getting there, that's for sure. Well, you know, we've changed members a, a lot of times and really a lot of times before we came into any kind of popularity. So this has been a thing we've been experiencing since the very, very beginning days of the band. And um, originally it was a lot of bass players that we were going through that people don't really even know about, you know. And, uh, but you know, I, I think that with member changes, it comes good and bad, you know. The, there's certain backlash, I think, from fans that find themselves attached to certain ex-members, you know. And I think that having a DVD, you know, Majesty, kind of, kind of led to that, you know. So it's been a blessing and a curse, you know. I think it's cool to bring new guys in that have a new energy they're going to bring to the fold and kind of reignite the flame, you know, whereas the guys that have quit usually quit from because they're sick of touring, you know, so by the end of that, at the end of their tenure, they're kind of tired and grouchy and just not having as much fun as they used to have, so, you know, I enjoy having new members come in and kind of kick things in the pants, you know, right now, Max and Alan are those guys, you know, uh, I don't really consider either one of them the new guys anymore because, I mean, Max is... Max has been with us longer, but Alan's been in the band at least two years now, so, you know, it's a lot of shows, a lot of touring, and he's seen and done a lot with us, and, um, yeah, just their excitement to be here, you know, is, is cool, and it feels good. I think it's just realizing what you are, and I think from the very inception, you know, and we kind of made a pact to always go to the van, you know, whether this thing doesn't stay as successful as it is, in the future or not, you know, we're gonna just just plow through it, man. And, and uh, you know, we're always lugging our own stuff around and stuff like that. I think a lot of it is just, to us, it was just being smart, you know, maximizing the money that we're gonna bring home, uh, keeping things tight-knit within the group. It's just the seven of us usually, you know, the five players plus Woody plus Mike, the TM merch guy. So, you know, it's just, I don't know. It's just accepting a lot of work realizing that touring is it's not a glamorous life you know we've been doing it for like 13 years now and most of it is being sweaty uncomfortable tired um you know but it's what it's a necessary evil to you know all that stuff all that waiting around and boring parts of tour to play the show and to to do this thing you know it's definitely worth it so um, you know, 13 years of touring and, you know, being in this band and all that, I I still look to the underground all the time and, uh, I mean, pretty much every band I like has, hasn't had the opportunities that we've had, you know what I mean? They, uh, we're a very lucky band, you know, to be playing music as extreme as we do and, you know, to be able to go out and tour and survive on that and just you know, have the popularity that we have. It's just a total fluke as far as I'm concerned, man. It's just amazing. And, you know, we never said we were an original band, you know, that we never claimed to be an original band. I think it's just been right place, right time, right decisions, right management, and a lot of luck. And, um, yeah, but, you know, I still buy CDs all the time. I still check out new bands every day. You know, my curiosity for combing the underground has never ceased, you know, and I think that really the bigger this band gets, the more I delve deeper into the underground to, you know, to kind of balance things out and kind of remind me where we're from, you know, and so, uh, but, you know, but things that, I don't know, there's, I mean, there's always new bands, new sounds, there's always new bands that have old sounds too, you know, tributes to the past, and I really like all these different directions that metal goes in and has been going in, you know, and, uh, you know, uh, stuff I don't like, you know, I guess I was I was saying this early in another interview, uh, just how digital metal has become, I think, just uh, that the era of Pro Tools has kind of taken a lot of the personality out of it, and um, I realize it makes things easier, you know, and it can save you a lot of money in a lot of cases, but I think too many albums come out now that sound too similar because of using the same snare samples, using the same producers, using the same everything you know same guitar tone you know and now you can you can use a Kemper and get someone else's guitar tone you can trade them over the internet you know it's, a, it's insane you know so I think really just keeping technology out of it not I mean there's some bands that sound great that are really produced and stuff but for me I think there's been too much focus on that and uh, you know 
I think uh, there's definitely room out there for more raw stuff and more real sounding stuff. And uh, I don't know, that's my two cents. At the end of the day, I would like people to leave, you know, this band with, I don't know, just some kind of happiness from it, you know? I know it's death metal and the idea is to scare people and repulse people, but at the heart of it, you like death metal because it's something that you like that satisfies you and makes you happy, you know? And I hope that we can do that for people. I hope that we can make people forget about how crappy life is for at least five seconds while they escape through music or escape through the, the, the show itself or anything like that, you know? Just to, to lift the burden of life for at least a second, you know? And I realize that we have a lot of young fans and a lot of, um, I guess, nerd fans, I guess you'd say, you know? And we've kind of been a, a voice for the nerd. And I think that metal is also the music of the nerd and the outcast, you know? So just to give somebody a voice or to give someone, you know, that feels like they don't fit in some, some kind of voice or some kind of strength, you know, that means something to me. I think that's cool and if we could do that for a kid out there and give him something to be excited about and something to, you know, th I mean, that's what metal is for me and that's what, that's how it saved my life, you know, as a young kid was just giving me something to belong to when I felt like such an alien. So if we can give that gift to somebody or show them the world of the underground death metal or anything like that, then, then that's cool and that's what it's all about.